What's up, everyone? We're live. We're live on LinkedIn and uh, YouTube right now. I'm with Karen. I'm uh, Nick, and we're both on the developer relations team. And uh, we're going to be up to all kinds of shenanigans today in terms of um, Atlas Search and uh, using MongoDB in your own development projects. And Karen, you want to you want to say anything? Luce we got Luce in the us. chat. Hi, Luce. Yeah, if you're in the chat, hello. If you're in the chat, go ahead and uh, comment. Let us know where you're from. Uh, I'm here in Austin, Texas. I've been at MongoDB over five years. Aussie just asked me that question earlier. So if Aussie is watching, it's been it's been over five years. Um, uh, and then uh, Nick, I guess we've known each other three or four years now. Although I think we've only met each other once in person. <laughs> you say hey, once, Ira. but it's been like four or five times. It's uh, it's been it's been more than that. <laughs> but I work with you the most on the team, yeah. which is really surprising that I've only like. Like, I don't even know how tall you are. No. Hey, Mohi. <laughs> Nick's based in, in freezing California right now. Yeah, it is a little so bit if you're cold from right now. Really, I think most of the states, the United States, are cold right now. But um, Yeah, something like that. Argentina, Hello, Walter from Argentina. Uh, I just came back from Colombia last week, Walter, so... And my head is still, my head is still there. Beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and I realize it's not the same as Argentina. <laughs> hey, Mike Lynn. Um, yeah, keep sharing. So, Everyone keep sharing where you're tuning in from. We're always curious to know um, where everyone's at. So that way we can properly coordinate these streams um, to the popular time zones. We don't know. Well, <laughs> As you guys are, hi Shivam, thanks for joining us from India. So as you guys are joining, I'll go ahead and give you an, uh, an idea of what we're gonna do today. I tweeted that, so Nick and I, we worked on a few things together. So I wrote this application, I wrote this sort of online workshop. So it's gonna be kind of a new way of learning. Um, and I've done it several times, but I have never seen anybody do it, do my workshop in front of me. So Nick has, has I have volunteered Nick to do that. So this is what we're gonna see. Hey, Ethan, Ethan's here, yay. Um, we need to catch up. But uh, uh, Nick is going to be kind of my guinea pig and we'll see how it goes, see how it goes together and if I need to make any changes and stuff. But the whole goal, Nick already knows Atlas Search, but the whole goal is if you are home and you want to code along with us, we have all the resources online. We're going to show you the application in a second. I have all the sort of code snippets and copy. So uh, we can, hello, Sean Hayes from Germany. So we can uh, sort of get up and get going quite quickly on that stuff. So Nick, shall we? Sure. Yeah, like Karen said, she's always talking about this workshop, but I've, I've, I've never actually tried it. <laughs> so we're going to, we're going to see. And this. I asked him to look at Go it. And he's always like, "Ooh, pretty colors," and then he, you know, and then he doesn't do it. <laughs> and then I ignore it. Um, but no, this is a different different stream that we're up to today. I think this might be our first ever kind of workshop, kind of join us kind of stream, um, right, Karen? We're yes. our first uh, virtual workshop, I guess we can say. Um, yeah, so, so this, I'm excited to show you guys. Yeah, I'm excited to show you guys what we got. So um, let me go ahead and share my screen. So, by the way, this is uh, that that is actually if you, as you could tell, Nick actually does look like that. That's not a rendering. <laughs> yeah, that's an actual photo of me taken uh, yesterday, right? <laughs> he's a bit he's a bit wooden. Um, so I can't really talk about. I'm I'm gonna quickly go into why we're building this. Why we're building this. Uh, why we built this application. Um, it is about how to build search inside. I live in Nigeria's in the house. It is about how to build search inside your applications. I am going to show it through MongoDB if you're using MongoDB, but a lot of these things, whatever sort of search you need when you're building search into your applications, a lot of this is, hey, Chuck, what's up, Chuck? I still love saying that. <laughs> so uh, it is a lot of times when you're building search into the application, a lot of these can be uh, a lot of these principles and strategies that I'm going to talk about today can be applied whatever whatever search solution you're using. But I do think it's really easy if you're using MongoDB. This is absolutely the best way to build search on it. Um, so let me talk about why we are crazy about our search solution for this. So a lot of times when you're when developers are building applications, they'll have their database. And in this case, we have MongoDB. 
the data is stored in it and it's optimized for, um, if you know your query patterns in advance, it's really great for that, really great for transactions. Um, but it's not particularly great for search. It's kind of cumbersome to work with search. So we've seen companies use MongoDB or whatever they use their data for, and then they have a different solution for how they do search. So they might bolt on an entirely different third-party system that is optimized for search. It could be Elasticsearch or Solar. And then they're on that side, on the other side of that, they're using Lucene, which is the incredibly popular sort of battle-tested open source library optimized for search. Wow, we got people from all over the place, Dublin and everywhere. Yeah. So thanks for the compliment, yeah. Wallace. <laughs> what? Pakistan. I got wow. a compliment oh, on my Wallace setup. This is what Nick does during the pandemic. He <laughs> optimizes. So when you have these two systems, this comes with a whole new set of headaches. Like now you're, you have something for your transactions and you have something for search, but now you have to keep them uh, in sync together. You have to keep them connected. Hey, Jesse, you have to keep them connected. That comes with a whole new slew of headaches. You've got different data models. You've got different technologies. You have to manage it. You have to uh, secure it and all those things. And then keeping the data in sync is not easy and it's probably not completely in sync. It's never really on time to sync. So, oh great, long journeys. We actually have a lesson for you and I'll show you that later. So what we did is instead of having these like two systems that you kind of keep in sync, we have taken, we've seen, and we've integrated it into Atlas. And this is how we built Atlas search. So um, with that, the sort of the flow of this is, I'm going to show you, so the workshop that we have, it's going to have you build out your own Netflix clone. So let's go ahead and show, um, Nick, why don't you go to the Netflix clone and, uh, right. if you want to share your screen and then we can. Yeah, 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 for sure. On the spot. Yeah. I'll let you click the little button to make people's uh, names show up on our stream. <laughs> Since I'm sharing my screen now, sound Thanks good. You. Deal. What are you doing? All right. I don't know. It's all good. I'll take care of it. Don't worry about okay. it, Karen. <laughs> all right. What do we want to do, Karen? What's the plan? I don't know. What does somebody want to watch? So let's let's look for let's look for like you, I see you're looking for Spider Man. Let's look for Batman. We're in the superheroes or do superheroes or something like that. We'll do Batman. Heck yeah. And so. A couple of things you can see here right off the bat is we have something for autocomplete long journeys. We'll show you the lesson on autocomplete later, but you could see that we have, um, so go ahead and hit enter. And so if uh -oh, you, we're missing a thumbnail there. Those, I'm sorry. So you we're can missing see a thumbnail guess, on one of these. That's all right. So you can see that that one, actually that's not awful because you can see the highlights. So you can see highlights. You see Batman inside the plot field, how that's highlighted in yellow. Um, yep. That score is, you probably wouldn't see it in a normal Netflix clone, but that score is search relevance. And we'll talk about search relevance later. So a couple of the features you see here right off the bat, you can see that it finds things. You can see that it queries across words, that it highlights things, um, relevance-based scoring. So now we see if we wanted to do, so if we did rating seven, so why don't you change, scroll that IMD rating zero up to eight. And we'll see if there are any Batman movies. Go ahead and make oh, it eight. Oh, you said seven. All right, eight. Eight, just to see if it gets excluded. Now go ahead and submit. So now we've excluded. So if you can scroll on that, you could see that those are at least eight. So now we can see that we're also, we're querying across uh, words, but we could also query across numbers and we could sort of combine things. If we wanted to play around with dates, if we wanted to play around with facets, all of this application will be able to do all those things. So dates, numbers, facets, look for strings and arrays, et cetera. So this is kind of the application that we're going to build out. And Nick, go ahead and hit that. Do you see that purple yeah. show query code? Yeah, hold on one second. Just to confirm though, the, the, the rating that is actually in the data versus the score is a calculated value, right? Yes. And we'll show you that. We'll show you the data document for these movies. And so is this large enough for everyone? If, if it's not large enough, just drop something in the chat and I'll zoom in. But go and on, we Karen. can do fuzzy search, Nitesh. Great. Yeah, go ahead, scroll in a little bit. Scroll and in. So, or zoom in. Sorry. Oh, you want me to zoom in? All right. All right. So you can Let's see. Yeah. So, so this code that he has, we're querying for Batman. 
across the title, plot, and full plot of this document. We'll show you the movie documents in a second. But building out this code is exactly what this workshop is going to teach you how to do. It's going to teach you how to, we're going to build out this application and we're going to build it out into pieces. We're going to start with building that sort of that, that code that's going to be part of this application. Okay. So with that, why don't we, so this is what we're going to build. Um, we saw the highlights. We saw relevance-based scoring. We're going to show function scoring, highlighting, autocomplete, fuzzy matching, everything you guys are asking for. And if you have more requests, go ahead and put that in there. We'll show you what's going on. Nick, why don't you go to, and if you're at home, you could do this as well. Go to atlassearchworkshop.com. Please. Uh, let me drop that in the uh, in the chat too, and I'll show it up on the screen. Hold on, let me just copy it from my browser here. All right, so this is the uh, publicly accessible URL, um, and this is an actual workshop, and it is what we're going to do, and it's going to give you hands-on experience research. So long journeys, I think this will definitely help you out as we go through this. So um, but, if you see oh, the atlassearchmovies.com there, if you wanted to, you know, Nick already showed you, but if you're on this, everything that you need to do this workshop, including the demo app that we're building out is actually on this workshop. You don't have to kind of search the internet for things. So if you click on that link, it should pop open atlassearchmovies.com in a different browser. But um, go ahead and scroll down, Nick, and we'll show you some of the lessons we have. So. One of the things I really like about this workshop is it's broken down into little pieces. We're going to start really, really small. We create the search index. We start building some basic queries. And then we're then we're going to fill out kind of the search aggregation, do a bigger search aggregation. Maharashtra. Maharashtra. Um, and then we're going to just start doing all sorts of things. But the first five lessons, Nick, if you could scroll down just a smidge more. Um, so the first five lessons is actually, um, let's, can you, uh, what are you trying to have me collapse? show just the first five here? Yeah. Can you go ahead and collapse? Hit that minus. Yeah. So if you can see here, the first five lessons are basically, we're going to build out the sort of basic Atlas search movies website. And then the next lessons, six, six and seven, they're going to get more complicated. We're going to start playing around with the different results, combining different search operators together. We'll talk about indexes and analyzers in Lucene. And then um, uh, autocomplete, we could talk about facets. For, and then the nice thing about this lesson is that this is kind of an, a, a growing online workshop. So as new features come out, we could add new lessons in here. So there's something you want to see in here, like. I don't know, pagination, more like this operator, et cetera. We can build out those lessons. So Nick, why don't you go ahead and just let's click on a few, go to a few lessons. Go ahead and click that one. Can we start lesson a lesson board. or just expand a few? No, just let's just look at a few things real quickly. You could go to go to lesson one. Sure. And so so this gives kind of instructions. Go ahead and scroll to the bottom. So this kind of the gives point instructions. The of this lesson is for indexing. The point of this lesson is just to create an index, right? So it's this lesson is going to go super, super fast, but everything that you're going to learn about that you need in here is going to be on here. So um, there was a GIF that you saw on if you can't follow the instructions, there are these nice little videos that will show you exactly what you need to do. So um, and then the other thing is go ahead and let's go ahead and hit the next lesson. So go ahead and scroll a little bit more. And so let's so, so a lot of these you could see that I already have code in here that you could just copy and paste. Um, scroll a little more. Let's find a video that we could open up. You could see that I have different operators. All of these are are copy and paste. And go to next. Are you sure, you have videos on this page. We'll go to the next lesson. Just go to different <laughs> lessons. It's hard to, <laughs> where are all your videos? So, well, then go to the next lesson, Nick. You'll see videos. Wait, here's a video, so right? So there, there's a video. So in some of the, the earlier lessons are so easy, you probably don't need a video. Once the lessons get a little harder, so we're going to talk about in this one, how to create app services and application app services. This is create our backend. 
if you can't follow along with the instructions, if they aren't good enough, then Nick, why don't you go ahead and hit that show video walkthrough button. Sure. So now you can like play this video and this is gonna kind of show you how to, to walk the way through. So the whole goal of this application is to um, kind of be a one-stop shop for how we're gonna start building out how you could build everything out in search. So I can take this screen back again, Nick, if you don't mind. Sure. Thank you. So as we went through this, I hope you see a few things. You see that we had, um, there's a hosted, there's a hosted code sandbox in there. Maybe you saw that. Um, uh, maybe we didn't show that enough, but we'll show it in a second. So the front end is in a hosted code sandbox. And then back end we're going to do is uh, we're going to build out a serverless back end. So what this means is no servers to manage for you. You don't have to worry about installing dependencies. And hopefully I took, I've done a blog on this before, something similar to this, but a lot of people, they kind of, they, they hit a snag and then they can't actually recover or if they, um, want to learn something more advanced, let's say autocomplete, for instance, long journeys, I don't want you to have to start from the beginning. The nice thing is in this workshop is that you can go to, hey, Sean, is that you can go to the lesson that you wanted to. If you've already know all the sort of beginner stuff, then just go ahead and skip to the lesson that you want. There's going to be a version of the, uh, there's going to be a version of that Netflix clone that supports everything that you've already learned. So you don't have to kind of build it up from the beginning. Um, it's also go at your own pace. So you don't have to, you know, uh, spend a lot of time on, so you don't have to worry about kind of keeping up on something. Whenever I do these, these blogs online, I always feel like I have to kind of finish it. And if I don't finish it, then I got to start over at the beginning. This one, you can kind of start from wherever you are. There are videos, there are fun exercises to do. And then the copy and paste code snippets help a lot. So you don't have to know, you don't have to know JavaScript. You just can sit down and start coding on this workshop. So a few things, it's free and easy to set up. Everything we do, Nick is gonna show you that we have a free Atlas cluster. You don't even need a credit card to get this Atlas cluster. We're gonna have sample data on that cluster. You don't have to upload it. You just hit a button inside of Atlas and Nick will show you that well. This use case, we don't need another Netflix clone, but we like um, this because it has all sorts of different data types in it. It has dates, it has numbers, it has arrays and strings, et cetera. So we can query across all those. Hosted and serverless, nothing to manage for you. Code samples, streamlines development. Again, you don't have to worry about sort of dependencies. On and off learning points. So it's like a train. You don't have to start at the beginning. You get on whenever you want. And then we can also add on new features as we go. And so by sort of offloading, decoupling all of these things, I want you, when you're learning this, to just focus on learning search. You don't have to worry about React and dependencies and how you see it. You could just focus on what makes, how to build out these queries inside Atlas Search. So <clears throat> with that, as you go through this, as I was writing this, I, I, I took this, and so I already asked Nick about this, like I, I, I've done these cooking classes. Has anybody here on the stream done these cooking classes where you go with usually with your friends or whatever to this place and there's this big kitchen and they have all the food there and it's already cut and washed and they have all the utensils there for you. And then they have a chef and the chef is kind of teaching you how to cook. Nick, you said you haven't done this before, right? I have not done it. And I, I wanted, is it like kid appropriate? Like I wanted to take my kid to it. Is it like more of a kind of sip and paint kind of thing with the for adults. No, you can bring your kids to it and they teach them at different right. places. I think they have cooking classes at Sur Le Table and things like that. But the thing that I really like about it is that I don't know how to, like when you're cooking, so I have a recipe. The hardest thing is like getting all the, getting all the ingredients. And then I'm like, well, I don't have coconut oil. Can I use olive oil? And then I got to Google that and all this other stuff. This place, it has all that. So I can just, so Mike and I did do a cooking class together, but I was disappointed because that was more like a cooking competition. <laughs> so so I was like, I was really looking to learn. I mean, this is true. We did this. And I was looking to learn how to cook when really we were like, okay, show us what you could do. So this is helping you to learn how to cook and everything's already there. And you could just focus on cooking 
and not kind of the substituting and the cleaning and all the other stuff. So this is kind of a one-stop shop place. And then when you're done, you're going to know how to blan what blanching vegetables means. <laughs> you're going to know all these things. So anyway, so with that, um, let's go ahead and get started. Nick, I'll let you go back to the workshop and let's sure. just so I'll start from start page one, right? One and through. Yeah, we'll take it a little right. slow because I, I mean, I, Karen, I know you mentioned that these ones, these, these uh, stages are meant to be kind of short. I don't want to go mm -hmm. too fast on anyone, right? Actually, um, why don't we start with the cluster? Why don't you show what the data looks like inside of Atlas? Uh, yeah. So this is a this is a free tier cluster that Karen had already set up for me. I don't know what's in it yet. Um, I assume there's data. But um, if we go <laughs> if we go into the browse collections, if you've already got this free cluster, uh, let's see what we've got in here. Um, so yeah, she loaded it up with the sample data set. So if you're curious on on how to do that uh, on a fresh cluster, you can just uh, click this little ellipsis menu right here on your cluster. It doesn't have to be a free one. It could be a paid one. Uh, just load up a sample data set. It's like, what, 300 megabytes in size? It gets you probably 100,000 or so documents to work to play around with. Um, and one of those samples uh, includes sample Amplix, which is what what our example is powered from. Um, is there anything so in particular I should look at, Karen? Yeah, go to movies. So if when we're doing this, go to movies. So the movies collection is what we're basing our Netflix clone out of. Now, inside this movies collection, we have over 23,000 movie documents. Um, you could probably see it. Uh, and each, they have, I don't know how many fields are in here, like 80 different fields. So you could see the dates. You could see the strings, you could see the numbers, you could see all these different things. So this is a really interesting uh, data set, I think, because it's really good for search. So, oh, Utsa, yeah, thank I mean, you so much. Uh, something, something to note here, too. Uh, these documents, they're not just like flat. They are they have complexity to them, even though they have a lot of fields. I mean, we have, we have arrays in them. I saw an object down here. We have an object. Um, there's all kinds of craziness going on. Um, so it makes, makes the, the kind of playground experience a lot more. Um, interesting, I would say. Yeah, so right now this data is in MongoDB and the first thing we need to do to set it up for, um, to use inside of Atlas search is to create a search index, which is the, the purpose of lesson of lesson one. So yeah, and do, you, do you want to mention the difference between, because there's two indexes here within Atlas and you'll notice the same in Compass. You want to give like a, an over, why is there a difference um, in the workshop? Uh, I actually have some slides on it. It is in the workshop. Let's just go ahead and, and do this index first and then we'll, and then sure. after this lesson, then I'll talk about the difference in indexes because it is actually yeah. lesson eight, lesson I one. think, or seven. Oh, oh, so for, the, this, for what you're talking about. Actually, you don't even have to go to this. You don't even have to read this. We'll, we'll just go ahead. This is just yeah. basically setting up a, a, a search index. So create a search yeah. index. This is what. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, create a search index. I have no search indexes currently for this cluster. Um, and um, we can use a visual editor or JSON editor. Um, we, as of right now, we don't have any intention of doing a complex index, right, Karen? Right. We're just we're just getting started. I'm just trying to so you've walked into my kitchen. <laughs> you've walked in my kitchen and you're eating a carrot. <laughs> so I just chose a basic uh, I chose the JSON editor because we're just going to use the default. I'm going to even leave it as the default name and yeah. uh, it, it's going to have a dynamic mapping of true. Uh, at the at the root level of this index, so it's basically going to encompass every single field, right, Karen? Yes. So past, I future, actually, and present ahead, kind of thing. Go ahead and hit enter on this, so we can get we can get going, and I'll explain what dynamic mapping is. Oh, uh, all right. I'll let you index. take that. So if you go to the lesson, actually, let me. Um, where is my Where is my lesson? Um, So if so, dynamic mapping it actually. I'll let you go ahead and oh, so it says it here. If you scroll, can you scroll down to the bottom there? Yes. On that page. So it says what dynamic mapping is. 
right um, so right. that's the index that we created so we talk about dynamic mapping is um when it just kind of goes through creating that index it's going to start uh it's going to map all the data inside there to um um I, actually, I have it in lesson nine, so I have these nifty diagrams that I want to show. But this is kind of how we sort of cut up the data so that, like, if it's a string, then it's going to index it as a string. If it's a number, it's going to index it as a number. And then we're going to start creating the maps between our search index and our MongoDB index. Um, mapping dynamically means that as our data grows or as your schema evolves, then you can, um, then it'll map everything automatically for you. So you don't have to worry about if you change uh, your data, like a lot of times in other solutions, if your data schema changes, you often have to delete that search index and recreate another one. This will kind of do it automatically for you. Let me see if I can get... Um, uh, While Karen's uh, looking around, let me just put out a statement right here for anyone who's coming in late. We're live right now. Uh, we're... Uh, we're here uh, to to help everyone be successful using MongoDB. And if you have a question, please drop that question in the chat. We're we're broadcasting to LinkedIn as well as YouTube. Um, and we will we will try our best to include your question in in the content that we we go over. Um, so just want to put that out there, right, Karen? Yes. So um, let me show you if I can go ahead and show you. Uh, the indexes and analyzers. This is a later lesson, but um, we might as well talk about it now. So remember, we said we have MongoDB and we have our search solution on the other side. MongoDB uses a B tree index. Um, Atlas Search uses an inverted index. So when we are indexing in Atlas Search, we're creating an, a, we're breaking down this data to be used in this inverted index. So if we have these documents in MongoDB, um, like these different sentences, Atlas Search is going to take down when we create the index. So this, for instance, is using the Lucene Analyzer. When we create the index, we break it down into these little pieces. It was the best of times worst. So um, we go back and we compare, when we compare our inverted index to our standard index, it'll say, now that we've broken these things down into tokens, that's going to be inside of our index. And so that index is going to contain those tokens and it's going to contain a map back to the original document. Um, it, for instance, is in document four, best is in documents two and three. So this is kind of, as you, this, I, I just want to kind of mention this and there's a, there's a later lesson that goes into more details about something like this, but this is just when you created the index, that's the first thing you need to do. And different analyzers will break down your text into different ways. And so this is something that's probably more advanced that we'll talk about later. But for right now, the whole reason why Nick had to create a special index was he needed to prepare our data for Atlas Search and that's kind of what we did. So Nick, I'll let you take it back. All right. So now we've we, now we've created that search index. So now go to the next lesson. Do we want to test out our query, or do we want to just go to the next lesson? Uh, well, if you want to test out your query, you can. But the next lesson, we're going to test out the query anyway. Oh, all right. I, I yeah, I don't. I wasn't paying attention to what the what the actual lessons <laughs> were at a time. So we'll go to the next lesson. Don't I'll, I'll go along with that. Ahead of time. Because you won't do it. <laughs> hey, Utsav, if you're listening, I think we cover that in lesson six on compound. So you can, if you already know all this stuff, you can look at lesson six. So now that we have that query, this lesson, and we'll talk about fuzzy and everything, is how to build out certain search stages. So yep. we build out our queries for Atlas Search using an aggregation pipeline. And if you haven't used aggregation pipeline before MongoDB, you should use it. It's great. But um, Nick is going to show you how to kind of build out an aggregation here. Yep. You can do this uh, numerous ways. Um, so I'm in Atlas it's right now directly in the in in the dashboard. Um, but you can use Compass. You can do this in your in your favorite language of choice in your in your own applications. Use a shell. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, but for this, I'm just going to use um, Atlas directly, the dashboard. But this is the aggregation pipeline builder I got to by clicking on collections. Um, 
actually, I, I don't want it on the sample Airbnb. I want it on sample Netflix. And what do we want? Movies? Mm -hmm. That's where we put our index, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll do aggregation for that. So this is the pipeline builder. Going to give us some previews um, of like a sample set of our data as we progress. Um, so of course, there's about 24,000 documents. Uh, it's going to show us 10 at a time. Um, as far as our sample based on each stage. Um, so we're going to do a, a search stage first, right, Karen? Yes. So you can go ahead and type it in. All right, we're going to do regular search. And um, it'll give us a, like a hint of, of what we want to populate for this particular stage. Uh, the index, uh, we called it default. Uh, if, if, uh, you, if you have an index called something else, you would use that instead. Uh, we'll do... A text-based search for now, right, Karen? So uh, we can do our query string. Um, so should we go with the Batman trend again, or should we go with something else? Actually, I was going to say, why don't you go to the workshop so people can oh, see how easy right. it is. And there's just something you could just cut, cut, copy, and paste. So go ahead, and we're going to do Harry Potter in this theme. So if all you right, just I copy and paste that. Sweet. And so now you see you've got Harry Potter. But so now we have all these different Harry Potter movies. But if you misspell Harry Potter, somebody had fuzzy matching question in there. So why don't you put three R's and three T's and see what happens for Harry Potter. So Let's this query. Larry Potter. <laughs> well, no. there are Larry's in there. So we're not really misspelling. Oh, anything. man. All right. I thought I could fool it. But uh, all right. You, you want some extra letters in there. Thanks. So so. Now we've misspelled things and it doesn't work. So uh, real quickly, we are querying here for Harry Potter inside the full plot field. Now, different things we could do. The tutorial will work you through how you, if you want to add more fields, you could, instead of doing path full plot, um, you could do uh, path full plot and title. Go ahead and do that, Nick. You want me uh, to do an array? Actually, why don't we do, yeah. Anything else? Now we're yeah, but now let's do that fuzzy thing. You can and you could copy that fuzzy snippet from the workshop as well. So scroll down um, a little bit. Right here. And so, yeah, you could do that, or you could do the uh, the complete one. Yeah, complete. but that messes up my array. So I'll I'll just copy. Okay. All right, all right. So let me go back in. There we go. And just like that, that's all you need to do for fuzzy matching. You could set it up for max that it's one or max that it's two. Max that it's two means you're going to have more results that are probably not as consistent. Max that it's one. I, I kind of like to do that. So now. And that uh, max edits is on a word per word basis, right? The max edits is on a what? The fuzzy is on a word per word, right? Yes. Yes, it is. So. In the same lesson, so if we're in lesson two, Nick, if you right, go back, back to, to lesson two, uh, yeah, so scroll down a little bit. Are you at a hundred percent here? Okay, great. So these are uh, so that you, was a base. Am I a hundred percent like Zoom or a hundred percent focus? <laughs> hundred percent. Are you? Are you at a hundred percent focus? About one seventy-five on Zoom, if that's what you're asking. I don't know what you're referring to. It's the formatting, the formatting, like funny. So, what we just showed was the basic text query, but this one actually, these are different sort of, uh, these are different sort of search operators. So, in our dollar search stage, which is our first stage in our aggregation, we use the text operator, but now we could use phrase. We could use range across numbers. We could use wildcard. So if you wanted to, why don't you grab any? Why don't you grab any of those? Grab the range one, I guess. You want the range one? Yeah. I got it. Because now, now we're not necessarily going to look for Harry Potter, but go ahead and do range. And now your movies have changed. So now we're yep. looking for movies that have an IMDb rating between eight and ten. So now it has nothing to do with Harry Potter. But we're going to show how to sort of combine these in a little bit. So so these are some of the operators we can do. Um, now, if we go back, Nick, if you want to maybe go back to the last one you had, you had a Harry Potter full plot. That's fine. We'll keep that. Uh, you're talking about that one? Yeah. I just, so, I just did undo. 
Oh, that's fine. And then now this is our first stage inside of our inside of our aggregation. Let me share my screen again. Anish, search should be available in Compass. Are you using a modern version of Compass? Sometimes I, I lose track of what version I'm on. Um, just make sure it's the most recent. Actually, should be available Anish, as of a few years, not, right? Anish, if you're connecting to an Atlas cluster and search is not available, then well, there are too. two things that can happen. You might not have your index created or search has to be the first stage. So in this in this slide, you know, I want to talk about real quickly. So this is a good leeway for this. We talk about an aggregation earlier. I said we have to create our search queries in an aggregation. So an aggregation inside MongoDB is you have all these documents. For us, it's this movies collection. And then we'll go through different sort of transformations. Every stage, we're going to transform the data somewhat somehow. And that's going to change the data. And then the results of that stage will go into Yes, it is available offline. Um, the results of that stage will go into the next stage. We'll go into the next stage. It's a great tool for all sorts of things. I use it for cleaning data all the time. I use it for making other collections, but it is a way to unlock other workloads aggregations. We use it to unlock search workloads. We use it to unlock um, time series workload, et cetera. So, so this is basically what an aggregation is. So Nick showed dollar search as the first stage. So I would make sure that you're using dollar search as the first stage. Um, make sure you have your index created and then it should work regardless of whatever version of Compass you're on. Oh, and you need to be on a, um, when did search come out? You need to be on a Search five, uh, is like three years Atlas ago. Cluster. I think it's five, five, oh, five, one, something like that. I think it's so. four, four. Isn't it four, four? Okay. It's all a blur. <laughs> it's all yeah, it's a blur. it's been a while. Okay, so I'm responding to a comment uh, from Ace here. I'll actually just show it up on the screen. Um, you can you can get started with Atlas for free. Um, it's not a trial or anything. There's a free tier. It won't cost you anything. So it's within your twenty dollars max for sure, and it can probably accomplish what you want for a social media like app. Right, Karen? Yeah, and if you want sort of a handheld this uh, how to how to spin up an Atlas cluster, it's on the first page of this workshop. There is a uh, there is a um, a PDF that you could access from page one. That's uh, um, let me see. There's a PDF show, that says show setup instructions in PDF on the first page and that'll that'll show you a pdf of how you can sort of um, um access where it. is it was it down down at the bottom yeah do you see that you see that big oh, purple button show setup instructions yeah yep there we go so that'll walk you through kind of how to how to just spin up an atlas cluster for free for sure so if you need those screenshots stuff <clears throat> okay so now we built our we did our first so what nick did we talked about the aggregation he built our first stage now if we go back to um, let's go to the next lesson, which was lesson three. So we did lesson one and two. Let's go lesson three. Sure. So now we talked about what an aggregation is. And because everything came out of search a certain way, now we're going to add new stages onto that to finish our dollar search query. So the next stage, let's do a dollar project. So yep. if you want to just copy that. Did you copy that code? No, nah, I was going to type it from scratch and let you talk Ooh. about what we're up to. You don't like that? You take too long. <laughs> I take too long. All right. I will I copy trying, and paste it. <laughs> I was trying to save people time. All right. I copied and pasted. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> typing on your own is when bad things happen. <laughs> so, um, uh, maybe for you. <laughs> Um, this is true. This is why I wrote this to save me the effort of, of doing it because I've, I've, I've messed it up so many times. But um, so in our project stage, we're basically getting back out just the fields we want. So we have so many different fields, but I only want this for my front end. I have my title, my year, my full plot, um, when it was released. Now the score is really, really important. So the score that we have here is, um, Excuse me. It's a it's an Atlas search score. So Atlas search. So Nick, why don't you in the preview panel? 
why don't you scroll down so you can see the score here. So this score, Atlas Search grades every document in our movies collection based on how well the movie document matches the search query above. So this is how well these movie documents um, match Harry Potter inside the full plot and title field. So as we go through here, if you were to like move the results so in this preview panel, you can see that the results, the score. So maybe take one of those documents and scroll to see the scores. Can yeah, you scroll? That, down? I am. There. Sorry, uh, I thought it was at the bottom. Um, so the score is being returned in descending order. So the highest score, scoring is really important in search. For, so there's a whole lesson on this one too, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But we really want the, the best scores get returned to the user first. And you know, whenever you're Googling for something, you really only kind of look at the first couple of first couple of, of results. Actually, there was a, I have some statistics in the lesson, uh, uh, lesson number seven that talked about how people really only look at the first three scores and nobody looks at like the second page of anything. So to build a good search experience, you really need to pay attention to whether your search results, your scoring on the documents you want returned match what you expect, what the user expects. So, um, hey Frank from Kuwait. So project, we talked about scoring now inside Let's go ahead and do, I showed you how easy it was to put in um, fuzzy, but why don't we go ahead and show in how to put in highlights? Nick, do you know how to? Yeah, we can get there. But before I do, there was a question from Damien. I don't want to ignore it. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a way to do fuzzy matching on strings in Realm on the client side? I don't think Realm has search functionality yet. Do you know, Karen? I'm not positive. They're working on that. They're working on that right now. So Work I mean, it depends on Realm if you're using, if 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 you're saying Realm is like the mobile database. So if you're using the data, if the data is in Atlas, then you could just do the search like this and call the API and get that data that way. So there are different ways of building it, but inside the Realm, the mobile database, they're working on that now. So perfect. Um, All right. So next phase here, next lesson, I assume here is the highlighting, right? Yes. So uh, but you have to go back to the previous lesson because we're not done with lesson three. We're not done. All right. Mm -hmm. Yep, there we go. Highlight. So, so, so we need to, it. yeah. So we're adding that to the project stage, but there's a trick to it. So what was you it? notice what was the trick? that you don't, the trick is you don't have highlights there. So we really have to put highlight is we have to put the high, we have to ask in our query, we have to ask that it returns highlight. So go back to that Atlas search workshop page one more time. Yep. So you see that because it doesn't know it's asking for highlights, but it doesn't know where you want the highlights. So if you see that uh, highlight path full plot, do you see it says, yeah. so your final dollar search stage will change to in the middle, that code block right in the middle? That's what I've highlighted, didn't I? Yeah. So you need to put that inside of your dollar search stage, Yep. not inside the dollar project. So, so that whole thing is so. Yep. I'm on it. Thank you. Nope, I put it in the wrong spot. Hold on. Yeah, Where did, how did I miss this one up? It goes after. It goes, mm -hmm. All right. You see, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't use search too much. So this is it's why, coming back. It's like riding a bike. But this is why I wrote the code blocks because. Yep, and it's very helpful. <laughs> because you're gonna mess up, or I'm gonna mess up, because I can't remember you're right. everything all the time. Um. It worked though. It looks like it worked. Okay. Um, let me see. I'm looking, so, I'm looking at the wrong one. Hold on. There we go. That's better. <laughs> so the last stage we need. So now we have all of the movie documents that match Harry Potter. We have the most relevant, the highest matches first. And so the final stage we're going to use is limit. 
So go ahead and add another stage. And the yeah. reason why limit is really important is because speed is really important in search. So remember, we have 23,000 movie documents. But if we know we're getting the best matches first and we know no, nobody ever goes to to return number 12, let's go ahead and limit. I, I said, let's go ahead and limit to, to 12 or whatever here. No matter what I, whatever I type in, you don't seem to like whatever well, I type in, do you? Had, had you looked at the workshop beforehand, Did it, say 12? <laughs> it says 12 in here somewhere. So Nick built that aggregation. Nick built that aggregation. And Nick, maybe you can show here how you can export that to language. Yeah, sure. So those three um, stages, do you see the, those three stages that we have dollar search, dollar project, dollar limit? that's going to make up the heart of our aggregation. And so you can build it really easily here, or you can write it out by hand. Lots of people like to do that. And you could have all these different languages. So this workshop, we're talking about JavaScript, but it, you do not have to do JavaScript to do Atlas search. It could be in any language. There's one more yeah. nifty little trick here. You could do this if you, if you want, Nick, but I have these little notes, sticky notes inside the workshop that'll say these little tips that I kind of found nice. Yeah, I usually I usually move limit above project, so I get the top twelve and then I project because I don't want to project through all the documents in the in the collection. Yeah, that's probably more efficient. So you can just drag it. Yeah, I did, yeah. Uh, yeah, it did drag. It's a little hard because I'm so I'm zoomed in very heavily right now. So I, but when okay, you're when you, you have a normal up. zoom, it, it's very easy. <laughs> Oh, Utsaf, Utsaf is bringing the great, great questions. Utsaf, I actually do talk about that um, later in lesson, um, in the analyzer lesson, which is in lesson eight. Um, so I have a nifty tool there, but let's let's finish this up. So now we have the yeah. core of our search engine and now we're gonna kind of use, um, can we discuss? Yeah, Nick, um, I mean, what do you want to discuss? And uh, we'll, we'll try to include it. Just drop us a message. Okay, so um, so let's see. So we did the highlights, we did the limits. So now I'm gonna. Um, uh, I put your screen up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so all we did in the first lessons. So I so I, I talked about how I compared this to the cooking a lot. So we're gonna keep exploring. I'm gonna really beat this analogy down a little bit. So. Um, uh, all we did now is we have our ingredients, we've cut it up into pieces, we've done kind of the basics, but we're not really cooking yet. We're just kind of done the prep work. And now we're kind of in the stage where we can kind of start building out the search, the start incorporating this into the Netflix clone. So we've we've prepared it to be integrated in the Netflix clone and now we'll do the Netflix clone. So in this uh, architecture, the Netflix clone architecture, in order to understand how we're going to incorporate that aggregation into it. I want you to understand the Netflix clone architecture. We have our data inside of Atlas, MongoDB movies collection. We created, we prepared our data. Our data is like our food. We prepared our data, we cut it in pieces using the default index. And then the front end inside of all these lessons, there's a, inside of the relevant lessons, there's a code sandbox and that's just written in React. And so for us to talk, to connect the front end to the back end, we're gonna use, there are lots of ways to incorporate it, but but just to make something simple in, in this particular lesson, I just went ahead and used, it's still within Atlas, it's our app services, which is our our um, managed backend. So we're gonna create an HTTPS endpoint that we're gonna call from the front end that's gonna use that search aggregation that Nick built. So that's what we're doing in this, in this stage. So Nick, I'll give it back to you to keep going. Cool. Um, all right, we're on the next lesson, right? Yes. Yep, create a RESTful API. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go into the uh, app services side of MongoDB, right? Yeah, and I can read this to you, so you don't have to go, keep going back and forth. Yeah, did you already create an app in here, or is this the first one? No, this is for you to create an app. So oh, all yes, right, you have to Let's do all the do cool. It. All right, so we're gonna link, link our uh, data source. Let me let me zoom yeah. in. There we go. Should be better. Um, all right. So first of and all, we only have it. one cluster. Oh, go on. Uh, we're gonna name it Netflix Clone. 
Yeah. All right. Sorry. Oh no, I I no, don't why did you do the dot? I'm fine. Whatever, it's fine. A dot? <laughs> I can't. Oh no, it's underscore. It's fine. Create the app service. Should I zoom in more? No, it's fine. All right. It's not it's not because it's, it's my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds no fair. All right. Okay, so now we do this only to be able to create this endpoint. So if you can see on this, inside our managed backend service, there are all sorts of things you could do. You could do GraphQL, you could do triggers, you could do a lot of things, uh, authentication, rules for your data. But right now we're, we're just in this particular instance gonna make a uh, HTTPS endpoint that we're gonna call. So go ahead and hit that endpoint. Sounds good, I'm gonna add an endpoint. What was the name uh, of the endpoint that I'm supposed to create? It's it's uh, slash movies. Perfect. Um, and uh, post or get. We're gonna make it a get. Uh, JSON and regular response. JSON. So, yeah, and then um, it's a new function. We call it get movies. Yep. And then. So now, actually, why don't you do me a favor real quick? Go get that HTTPS endpoint that you have. Like Sure. OK. Now go back to the Atlas Search uh, Workshop. Now you can paste it there, and I'm going to hold it for you for later so you can use it later. Is that the whole endpoint? Oh, yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, it's just okay. uh, I'm zoomed in so much yeah. that it's cutting it off. That's fine. So now you have that endpoint. Now scroll down a little bit. Go back to that workshop, please. Oh, the workshop. All right. Now get that code for the movies function. Oh, this is convenient. I did not want to type that one out. <laughs> so now we're going to paste this in here and then Nick can, why don't you talk about what happens in this? Cause you can. Cool. Yeah, have definitely. Uh, so we're defining that we want to work with our sample Netflix database from the linked cluster and the movies collection. Um, it looks like uh, we are extracting a potential search term from the query parameters, which so when we call this URL, uh, we'll probably do like a question mark uh, search term and provide a value for our search. Um, if we don't provide a search term, we're just going to return an empty array. Um, as far as the aggregation goes, we're going to say uh, we're going to take the movies collection, we're going to call an aggregation, and uh, we're going to provide the search aggregation. So we're going to have to populate this with some code, I assume, from the mm -hmm. workshop. Yeah. The results, we're, we're going to return all of the results um, as an array rather than a cursor, and we're going to return them back as JSON. Yes. And so, so let's get now, that, to our, that pipeline, right? Yes, you can get that pipeline. Um, scroll down a little bit because I saved it. Do you see that reveal full aggregation? You just yep. copy it there. So that's the one we built in the previous. Did that include the square brackets or not? Yeah, it did. All right. Perfect. Okay, and then yeah, you, you have can... to change Harry Potter to search term. Yep. In the query, yeah. Got it. All right. Now, good, right? Save it. Yeah. So the search term is actually going to be. I have this nifty. Why don't you go ahead and show them? I have this nifty tip in there that says you can um, disable the drafts. Oh yeah. By going All right. to the, the deployment tip. tab. Mm -hmm. So go to the deployment tab inside of Atlas. Oh, but I thought you you had a tip in here. No. Did you? Go, yeah. yeah. See, you see that? It's on the t on the yep. right. Yeah. Yep. Got it. So this. Yeah. Right here. So you're kind of benefiting from me hitting my head against the wall over many many weekends. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, um, the the drafts are good if you're probably in production. Careful. We're not in production. It, it, it kind of just slows us down if we're, if we're just like prototyping here. But in production, you probably don't want to disable the drafts because it could save you from from some kind of catastrophe uh, due to user error. Part, now, this is one part that's really, really important. So go back to the functions. 
Let's go back. Let's make sure. sure that we turn it to system ID for functions. And so inside the tutorial, I kind of put these. So go to settings. So everything's kind of secure by default. So this is going to use application authentication, but we want to override that here. So uh, we'll just do system ID just because we're going to call it from the browser. We don't necessarily need to call it from anywhere else. So go ahead and save. Yep. Oh, did you already save? Sorry. Nope. Okay. Now go back to the workshop real quickly. All right. Now you can grab that API that you have. Not ours, but yeah, that one. No, not that one. That one. That one. <laughs> that one's right. yours. And put it in the browser. And then and then we could add our URL parameter to it. Question mark. Yep. And then whatever Harry Potter equals Harry Potter. Sweet. There you go. Just like that, we built a uh, a custom HTTPS endpoint, and we're getting back our movies, and we're getting back all the fields that we want into the movies. So that's awesome. And the highlights. And the highlights. So one more thing, we still have right. that. Um, so if we go back. The next lesson, now we have that endpoint. And then in the next lesson, you see our code sandbox. So this is exciting. So you could use this code sandbox. And in the home, if you go to the components folder, oh, actually, hold on. Why is it taking it so large long? enough? Yeah, but I don't know why it's taking so long to load this sandbox. Oh, on the right? Let me refresh yeah. it. Oh, um, I think I it might be my ad blocker. <laughs> I don't know what kind of ads you're sticking in here for me. <laughs> Let me try it again. Oh my goodness. Okay, so, uh, Slack me that HTTPS endpoint and I'll share my screen. Uh, hold, oh, but not, but oh, give me a second to share my screen. Uh, actually, maybe it wasn't my ad blocker. Did we break it? Nope, it's working on my side. So do you need me to send you a, a URL? Yeah, send me that URL in Slack, please. All right. Let me make let sure me, this is working. Let me obtain it. You got it? Um, I don't know. Hold on. So uh, right now on this screen, we can open this, this sandbox. So, uh, this is everything you like. I said you don't have to install dependencies. So right now, if we do Harry Potter or the Matrix or whatever, you get nothing. It's just going to tell you to build build your own endpoint. By the way, you can open this up as well. And so once you do this, you can fork it. It goes inside your Git. So these things are super duper practical. Um, so it's going to tell you to build an endpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the endpoint that Nick just built. Uh, yeah, that's weird that it's not loading for me, though. Um, Having trouble oops. fetching if I look at the errors. Okay, well, we don't have the... So I'm going to just take this endpoint. I don't need the URL parameter. I'm going to go inside home. Components, home... And then I'm going to build this out here. So inside this, <clears throat> what we did is we took Nick's endpoint, and then in the next step here, we actually like append the search term, and then whatever is in the search box gets added to it here. And then we call. Then here's where we call the endpoint, return it to our application. And so now, just like that, we've connected our front end to the back end, and then we can show all sorts of different movies and stuff. Here here for Indiana Jones or whatever. Um, oops. Um, so just, and so now you have, if you've been able to do this, now you have your own endpoint. So uh, if I can, let me go back to, where is my, so now we've done lessons one through five. We've connected everything. These are all the things we've done. So we went from just having the ingredients and now we've actually developed something. Now we've actually cooked something. Now we've actually done really, really basic queries. And inside the lesson, I still give you those code 
blocks for different operators you can use that you can sort of put inside of um, inside of uh, whoops let me go back to here so if you were to use um, these different operators in here these different stages if you want to put that in your aggregation one thing I showed you here is like how these tiny changes inside of those search stages can change your results so if we're looking for Harry Potter in the full plot field we might get you can kind of see Harry Potter is kind of spread throughout other things. Um, adding uh, adding different fields in the path can change it. Adding different operators. Harry Potter, for instance, is a phrase, it's two words that kind of go together. So I can put them together and then now I finally have my Harry Potter movies. So these are sort of different. I showed you how to sort of create uh, different operators or sort of parts of your ingredients on how you build out your basic search queries. But you don't want your users to kind of have to work so hard to get Harry Potter movies first. You know, we don't have to like go through all those different results. And so in the next sort of stages is where I'm going to talk about how we can combine these different things. Uh, somebody had asked about how to combine these different operators together. So the next lesson actually talks about how we can we're going to start adding in the sliders, the calendars, um, and the check boxes here to use to use something like that. Um, I actually talk about. Let me see where am I? So I actually talk about in these lessons where I'm just kind of equipping you on the on the on the first stages. This you're kind of cooking, but now if Ethan is still on the call, then Ethan kind of like reminded me that when he talks to search engineers is that they're really artistic like they're not just engineers they're kind of search artists so now you know what your sort of queries that you have at your disposal are right now you get to decide which ones work in order to prepare something that your users would want so i often think about search engineers as like chefs you know to go along the white thing like you want anybody can make spaghetti and meatballs but you need to make killer spaghetti and meatballs to get people to keep coming back to your restaurant and so the next lesson, we're going to combine our compound queries. We're going to do compound scoring and indexes. And those are the, these next three lessons are where you go from cooking to chefing. So, um, Got it. Now, am I out of the game for these lessons because uh, the, the sandbox doesn't work for me? Uh, no, you can still build the aggregations and then just send them to me later. Um, cool. Um, so I'll and we've got, a, we've got a comment in the chat. Um, what if we use a phrase and not text? How will it impact the results in the query? Well, I mean, so so this is what I'm saying. Like, it depends what you are. I would use, right. you can you can use phrase if you want. Are the words that you're looking for, phrase really works when they're like more than, when there's a phrase, when there's more than one word. If you only have one word in there, then I guess I don't know if it makes a difference. But if it's two words, then phrase would definitely affect it because you have different tunables. And it slop says how closely they can be together. So for instance, Harry Potter. Putting fuzzy matching on Harry Potter will bring you Larry and Porter. So if you're looking across a full text field for Larry and Porter, and if you're doing this a text query, then it's going to return like Larry could be one part of the full text description and Porter could be somewhere completely different. Um, but if you're doing Harry Potter, it's going to look for if you're doing phrase with Harry Potter, it's going to say, I want these words kind of close together in the results. So uh, it, so it might return Harry. If you do fuzzy matching, it, it'll do Harry Potter if they're next to each other. It'll also do Larry Porter if they're next to each other, like depending on fuzzy matching. So there are all these little considerations that you could take in place here. So um, Abdella, Abdel, Abdelila, authentication failed. Make sure you go to inside the function settings. Make sure that you set it on system instead of application authentication. Right here. Yeah. So system and not authentic. And that should help with that. Yep. Okie dokie. So how are we doing on time? I mean, I know this has been an hour. If you're here, thank you so much for staying. I, I kind of like having Nick on the hot seat. Nick, what do you have? <laughs> how are we? <laughs> well, 
I'm really ruining your plan by uh, by having this thing break. No, let's just keep going. Um, <clears throat> so in this lesson, we're going to talk about so we'll so in this lesson, my, my the idea is it's a long lesson, so you can scroll through the whole bit. So this is kind of it's a long lesson, but it's fun. Um, maybe I can go ahead and do this. So, so which one is to. this one? So this is compound the compound operator? operator. All right. Yeah. So in those first three search boxes, you could see that we're looking for you know three different things. I'm looking for a horror movie. I'm looking for it to be about zombies. And it has to be a really good one between eight and 10, I guess, um, or between and including eight and 10. So I don't know if there are any, uh, I don't know if there are any different uh, excellent zombie movies. I think World War D is an excellent zombie movie. If that doesn't have at least eight, I'm going to be really bummed. So inside of this query is, um, <clears throat> so this lesson is about how do I combine the different queries together? And so we do have an operator. You saw that inside search, we have dollar text. I mean, we have text and we have phrase and we have all these different things, but we also have compound. So we could have take these little search building blocks. So I call them search building blocks and put them together inside of, oh, did it work out, Delilah? Good. Um, put them inside of the compound thing, but there's something else. We also have to consider, remember we have our chef hat on, so we also have to consider um, how much do these building blocks mean? Is it more important to me that it's a zombie movie or more important to me that's a rating or are they equally important? So this is when it's interesting as a search chef because you have to kind of anticipate what your users want. So because of that, these sort of capturing these nuances not only do we have this compound operator where you can just throw those building blocks in, but we have these clauses, must, must not, should, and filter. So Nick, if you could scroll, is it me or you? Oh, it's no, me. No, it's okay, your I'm screen. Uh, long journeys, um, you, you can't have multiple search stages. It's the first stage only, right, Karen? Yes, it's only the first stage, but you can combine different search operators inside of that one search stage. Yep. So for instance, uh, here at Long Journey, so for instance, if I wanted to have these different three search stages inside of my inside of my thing, I'm actually just going to combine the range and the text inside of a compound operator. So this compound operator will take, it's the compound operator, and then I use my clauses. And these clauses, I try to uh, discuss in more detail what they are, but um, things that I like about them is that not only like there's must in this filter and whatever, not only do they tell you must and filter, they're very similar, except must affects the search score. So if something is in it, then it's going to get a higher score. Filter, for instance, means it's either in it or it's not in it, and it's not going to change the score at all. So these are the things that you kind of think of these little nuances that you think about. So if this is my format for what a compound query is, if I wanted to combine these a zombie, a highly rated zombie horror movie, then I could create something like this. So I put these little um, exercises in here so you can kind of uh, challenge yourself. These are like exercises you can challenge yourself, but I don't want you to get stuck. So don't, so try it on your own and then open up the the open up the the uh, hide compound query, uh, open up there's, this little thing and see if it works. But there's a, a few lot of questions this coming me. in that I want to address after this too. But a lot of this is me. Like I said, it has to be a zombies movie. It should be a horror movie, and it should have this rating. If it's a seven, maybe it would also be uh, resolved or something. It just won't have a high enough score. So this is something, if it had to be between 8 and 10, I could make it a filter, for instance. And that's probably more logical that I probably should have made it a filter and not put it in straight. Um, and so this particular query, if I put that in my movies collection with the default index, these are the movies that I would get back. So, um, so you can see here that I had different, different ratings because I said it was should. But if I had filter, it wouldn't show up at all. So what were the questions you had? Yeah, we had two pop up regarding the authentication settings. So I figured it might be a good idea to at least address them slightly. 
um, not they're not around the compound operator. So first of all, what's the different authentication? What do the different uh, authentication settings mean? Um, so for example, we have uh, application authentication, system user, and script. Uh, it's this kind of relates to the next question around uh, is is the endpoints safe for front end app code? Um, and it it you're allowed to create app users within uh, MongoDB app services, and these users authenticate in some fashion to your to your application through these endpoints and generate a session. Um, and you can create rules around these users. Um, so, for example, user X may only be able to access data for user X. Um, so it really it really depends. So it the system the system wide authentication that we chose to use in this example is basically everyone's allowed to access our endpoint. Doesn't matter. They don't need to authenticate, kind of thing. Um, but you can you can narrow it down and restrict it to make it safe depending on your your workload. Hopefully that answers the questions. I know Tom. Tom jumped in uh, with an answer as well. Thank you, Tommy. I bet he's. I didn't actually actually ask him to come, but thank no? you for being here. He wouldn't <laughs> no. miss it. I didn't even know he knew I was doing this. Oh, I did something wrong here. Oh, I don't have it. Um, oh, right. But uh, Tom's answer on the screen, just in case anyone wants to read it uh, when this video, because I don't know if all of the comments will be embedded in the final transcript. Uh, <laughs> My answer was way better than yours, Tom. <laughs> no, it wasn't better. But thanks for thanks so, for showing up. <laughs> Surprised he's not giving you a hard time. He. Uh... Oh, I haven't talked to him in a long time. <laughs> I've got so many things to say, but I won't, I won't use it for the stream. The 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 uh, Tom is my kid. If you're watching and you're wondering why I'm having this conversation with him, he's actually my son, and I haven't seen him in like six weeks. So, um, uh, and I would say I haven't talked to him because this doesn't count, actually. <laughs> so, anyway, so if I took that sort of combination that I had on that one thing and I put it inside the aggregation pipeline, this is something that I would get. Uh, these are the results I could get, and then um, just as just as Nick did. So this, is, by the way, is Compass. So Nick was doing it inside of Atlas. I'm going to do it inside of Compass. Um, I actually <clears> prefer <throat> Compass. Um, and in case anyone's curious, if you have to choose between doing it directly in the Atlas dashboard or Compass, I would say go with Compass. It's a, it's a much slicker experience, I think, in my opinion. And it's it's nice because you can like save these aggregations. This is a big reason I use it. You can save these aggregations, so you can come back later and play around with it later and i don't think you can do that in atlas atlas quite yet so the other thing is is that you can take a pipeline already in it and you can create a new a new stage whoops i messed that one up but anyway um so let's go back where was i on the lesson um, um let's, so uh I, so we're gonna we're gonna build out now we've built out that api endpoint we're gonna build out another one here um i we, uh, I just want to go back on that must, must not, should filter thing. So the idea of 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 being a okay, thanks, long journeys. I agree. I've been crazy about it since forever. Oh, and I want to show you something cool. So like, I'm sorry. I know this isn't a compass stream, but you also get the <laughs> Can shell. Can you zoom in on your compass too? It's very small. Command plus. Well, there's a few nothing times. on it right now. It's nothing worth it anyway. But that's the that's the movie state base. So we'll see. So <clears throat> so now. Uh, so what I what I'm thinking about these should must not whatever I often think about you don't think about it as much but you're going to need it so I often think about it as like uh, these search building blocks is like tile on a wall and if the wall is the compound stage well let's let's stay, stick with food let's say you have a plate so compound is your plate and these search building blocks are like your spaghetti and meatballs and then you're going to use the sauce. The sauce is going to be, I'm wearing, I'm wearing this one out. The sauce is going to be the clauses, the must, should, filter, whatever. And they're, you're going to use them to sort of bring out the flavor in either the meatball or whatever. So anyway, so that's, that's kind of how you, and, and the thing is, is like you don't really think about it. It's not the glory partner in your on your plate, but you're going to notice that if it's not there. So, so you really have to think about, those are things that people don't think about a lot, but you should because it makes all the difference in the world. So, um, let's go back to, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Nick. Where, where is our deployment here? So let's go to Nick's app services. You need my URL again? Nope. I'm building a new one. So now we're going to build a new URL. Oh, man. My old one wasn't good enough. Well, now it's complicated because that was an easy one. Now we're going to do a more All complicated right. one. So let's go back to the Atlas Search Workshop. And I'm going to, what lesson was that? Compound? Um, we're on. Okay. Yeah, I got it. We're on lesson six. So um, I'm creating my new endpoint here at an endpoint. Uh, it's going to be, I'm very bad at naming things. So if you're. If you're thinking that these are terrible names, gosh darn it. Is, uh, is her font big enough, uh, people in the chat? Just want to make sure. I know Karen likes to use a telescope when she uh, works, right? <laughs> Giving her a hard time. <laughs> yeah, you are. So it's a post, <laughs> respond with results, um, select a function. Um, we're going to do new function. The function is going to be called, what is it called? Uh, movies compound from number six sure huh? from number six yeah, we're, on we're on lesson six movies compound oh and so remember inside of the app let's see is this lesson six inside the app i can paste this here so that i can use it later so post new function and then Oops. Now I'm going to grab this as the initial code. So this functionality is actually pretty hard. So let's, uh, I'm just going to save this and then we'll go look at the function in a second. No authentication. Let's save. Okay. Let me go back to the function. You're you going to put it at system uh, settings as well? We do the yeah. system settings as well, but we won't need it for the next one, and I'll show you why. Okay, so Ooh, we got a celebrity walk. in the chat. <gasps> Otto, <laughs> hi Otto. Otto, that picture is scary. So the funny thing is, if you know Otto, you know that picture is really funny because he's like not scary at all. <laughs> <laughs> so inside this, inside, so inside, so let's walk through this this. It's, it's also in the lesson. Um, actually, let's walk, walk, walk through it in the lesson. So inside of this code, so this is the code that we put in here. Um, we are, again, we're connecting to our movies collection. We are posting this time. So inside the post, we're going to sort of, we're going to take these parameters out, out of the post. Here's where we get everything back out of the post in these three lines. This is the search aggregation that we're going to put in here. So um, I'm going to, this line later, I'm going to create the search aggregation and then I'll be able to uncomment this line. Um, and so in this one, basically I'm running the search aggregation on the movies collection. So that's all these lines will tell you whatever is going on in the code, but, uh, it's quite complicated functionality to take all these parameters and build a search aggregation. So I have one to get the movies and then I'm going to call another function, uh, here to create that aggregation. So here I'm going to um, create a new function, uh, da, 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 function, and what do I call it? <clears throat> we're going to create a new function that we're calling. Da, 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 create a new function. It wasn't the the movies compound, right? It was another one. It's called like create search aggregation. That's it. The We're get movies compound? No. Oh. No, we already created that one. But remember, inside on right, line twenty-one, I, I, I need this. I need this aggregation, and I could put this in the same code, but the function's already pretty long, so I just kind of want to separate and make it easier to read. So I'm doing this create search aggregation now because I'm calling it from a different function within it. I don't have to put it system ID because I'm calling it from within the the app the application. Um, let's create search aggregation and I am going to inside my workshop, let's copy this. Um, and then what it looks like a lot of code that you just copied, but it's pretty easy 
to follow. It's uh, well. It's easy written. to follow. Yeah, it's well written. Oh my god. It's, a it's well written. I didn't even ask you. Nick always has to like change the formatting on all of my code. Auto, auto can tell you that. <laughs> but um, so basically, I know this is the this first is time that I think that looks great, right? Thank you very much. I'm sure I put in some some tool inside visuals like visual editor to, to kind of format it for me automatically. But what this says is like it, it says if there's a rating object, I'm going to create that 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 search building block genre object and create that search building block and if they exist then i'm going to push them on to remember these remember these clauses that i have so i have compound so this is my basic search query compound and then i create these clauses and then i push them onto the compound stage so <clears throat> that's what this function so this function just creates that search aggregation by creating those search building blocks and then i push my search stage, my limit stage, my project stage. And that's the only thing that it returns is the search aggregation. So hopefully this will work. Did I save this? Fun fact, you can actually use command S uh, to save as well. You don't have to click those buttons. I don't know if you knew that or not. I did not know that. It saves me a lot but, of trouble. But I don't really... Um, want to mix it up <laughs> right now on the list. Like, I, I, I'm shockingly bad at learning new things when people are looking at me. <laughs> so, and, so and for, for anyone who's curious, uh, you don't have to create these functions from the web uh, UI. You can use, you can use the CLI and do everything local as well. If that's your jam. Yeah. So long journey is mad with power I'm drunk with power. Um, which when you take the cooking classes, the nice red wine goes really well with that. So I uncommented line 21 because now I have that function. So we have this, just like I use context to access the thing, I can use context inside of app services to access functions as well as collections that have Alice and other things. So now I have that saved. I'm going to go back to my workshop. Uh, let me see if I have, I still have this. I uncommented that line of code. And now I'm going to, I probably need to put this in a different order. So remember I have that movie endpoint. Let's see if this works. Actually, so this is my code sandbox. Let me open it. Uh, I don't like Harry Potter. What are we gonna look for, zombies? Point. What's up, Juan? So in, Welcome to the party. What did I say to do? Where did I say to put this? Uh, inside of the home JS component. You keep talking about uh, cooking. It's it's making me hungry. We're getting <laughs> during your lunchtime right now. Let's see. Usually, um, I well, have food I'm, when I'm on a Karen uh, stream or, or video. <laughs> <laughs> we once did a live stream where we like eight <laughs> meatball sub at the end. <laughs> so now I put in that endpoint. So I said build the endpoint, but now I put in that endpoint and now we have all the zombie movies we want. And then we can do the different ratings, uh, make sure it's, I don't know if I want to do comedy, if there are any comedy zombie movies, but now we can play around with these things. And just like that, now we have a compound, uh, compound query. So this is a really, really, really long stream. I don't want to. I don't want to keep going. I don't want to stop the fun. But uh, you guys, let us know what you think. We we've done the hard part already. So I'm just going to go back and uh, and then you guys can tell me what you what you what we should what we should talk about. So we did um we did compound queries inside the workshop. So that was one big lesson. But we did a whole bunch in that one big lesson. It went by really quickly. And in this lesson, we talk about function scoring. And I'm not going to go too much into function story because, oh, yeah, we do need to do that seven layer. <laughs> all, my, all my ideas for talks have to do with food. So here are score modifiers. So you can start playing around with this. We won't belabor the point here. But I, I just wanted to kind of show you. And then I'll show you some examples that you can, that you can use. I think we, you guys let me know how you're doing. And, and if you want to cover something specific. Actually, I'm going to look to wrap this up. Uh, I'm going to come up with a video and a blog for this 
in the next week. And I'm going to come up with an instructional video that's not an hour and a half long. It'll be easier to do. But if you guys want me to, to talk about anything specific before we wrap up, put it in the chat now so that I can I can cover it. Because uh, otherwise, I'm just going to say, you know, read the, read the thing. Um, this is so, your opportunity to tell Karen what to write about. <laughs> it is. It is your opportunity to tell me what to write about. But <clears throat> inside this, so we do, inside these things, I talk about, we talked about how important the scoring was because scoring means we're going to get the certain movies first and how it is. But you can do ways that you could play around with the score so they could get different uh, items up first. For instance, um, in these, I say, uh, I'm looking for Godfather. I broke it my, down my compound. I'm looking for Godfather and plot and full plot. But if Godfather is found in the title, I'm going to take whatever score it is and I'm going to boost it by three. So if it returned eight or whatever, now it's going to be three. So now we're going to find Godfather movies. If I want a James Bond movie that only has Daniel Craig in the, in the plot, then I would, then this is something that I would do or other things. So different ways that you could sort of, we have three different ways to modify the score. So you could sort of uh, fix those things. And then I have these little exercises you could do. Um, long journeys you can do that but you can also do the multi operator inside of you can create when you create your index you can on one field you could use different analyzers on the same field by using the multi operator inside of that index definition so i hope that helps um this lesson is where we talk about indexes um I'm going to do a quick skinny on the indexes. We, we talked about indexes at the beginning, but. Um, quick uh, skinny? What does the, that mean? The quick skinny. Uh, <laughs> it means all the punch and none of the fluff. <clears throat> all right. Um, it's like, like, like your tequila. Um, so you have, uh, so we talked about the B tree index and the inverted index and how they change. I talk about how we broke a search index up, so, so it kind of looks like a map, so we can map to these different things. Um, so we have different types of analyzers, and in this lesson, I talk about the different types of analyzers um, that, that you can use for your index definition. So if we were to take, I use this example a lot. Somebody asked this question earlier, but I'll, I'll start with this. Um, if we took this text, uh, I was walking to work, listen to Mike Lynn's podcasts. Then if I use a standard analyzer, it'll break it down into these tokens. So if I were to take this sentence and I was looking for walking, for instance, it'll match, something will match. If I were to use the English analyzer, so the reason I'm, I'm saying this is I showed you how to, we have our data, we've broken it up in pieces, we're doing queries. We're playing with score, we're moving things around, but sometimes if the document you're looking for isn't in the return payload, it doesn't matter what you do. Why isn't that document in there? And sometimes when it's not in there, it's because you're using the wrong analyzer. And so these are right in, and your analyzer is going your index definition. I'll show you that in a second. So <clears throat> uh, here you go. Uh, so if I do walking, it's gonna show up. If I do English, so English is interesting because English says, uh, it understands if it's plural, it understands tense. So walking will match for walks or whatever. So if I do walking for standard, it works. If I do walks, it won't work because the word is walking in standard. But if I change it to English, then it will work. And so somebody asked earlier about like ampersands and things like that. Uh, in it, you can do, so for instance, in this one, these are my rules for what happens. So in this one, this is like an, an email. So this is going to, um, it'll show you how it's kind of broken up. So this one, the simple analyzer will break it wherever it finds non-characters. So who had the question about ampersands and stuff, if you wanted to match on the other sides of that, simple would be a nice one for that. Because if I wanted to, let's say I had an array of emails and I'm looking for Gmail, I'll put mongodb.com, nothing. Any analyzer I use, nothing will work except for simple. So 
And, and you can see that it matches because, because it showed up here. So that's why index is an analyzer important. And then, um, and then the next lesson is autocomplete. And uh, for somebody who is asking about autocomplete, I have, I have all this stuff here as well. I think that was a uh, long journey. Long journeys. Long journey has yep. been on this stream for the whole long journey. Likewise with uh, uh, Uts Utsov, uh, both asking pretty great questions. And then the okay. others who are tuning in as well. We've got some good questions on the stream. I'm wondering what simple analyzer, what analyzer we use for searching words like and, and, oh, <clears throat> so the other thing is, so Utsav, I would play around with that. I'll show you another website that you can play around with this. But the other thing is, is that you can create your own custom analyzers. So if you know, uh, if you have, if this pattern H&M is something that you always have that you want to kind of use as a divider in your tokens, then create a custom analyzer for that. And we should probably come up with some some materials for that. Um, but yeah, you can, so anyway, so I would play around with that. And let me show you some more resources I have. Um, let's go back to, let's go back to the lesson and see where we are. Is there any more questions so we keep going? I just want to wrap this up. You ready, Nick? You ready for my big? Yeah, sorry, I had it on mute because I'm raising my desk and I know it makes a lot of noise. All right, go for it. Okay, so we broke down. I broke down into. Remember, we had our um, we had our like the basics, the ingredients, and then we had our like we went from cooking to chefing. Um, and so, if I were to wrap this up, my food analogy up, remember. You're, you're a search chef now, but all your good meals start with good data. So we start with the fresh ingredients and your ingredients is your data. When we cut up that data and we prepare it for search, that's indexing. So you can think about this as like how the indexes matter. And then the search engineer, you get all these different tools. Once you have your ingredients, you get all these different tools that you could use, different operators, different analyzers, uh, custom analyzers that you use inside your index definition, clauses, score modifiers, and all of this will contribute to a really good um, search experience, search experience. And then that's going to come out to, and this is how, this is what you surface to your end user. And if your search experience is great, then you're going to have lots of end users and you're going to have a very busy restaurant. So with that so I might said, well have some food now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're almost done. So with that said, if you go to the last page of the website there, so now we know how to do these things, but I, like I, I leave these cooking classes, I don't know what to cook. So if you want some reference material, if you want some cookbooks or some videos, stuff that you can follow along, on the last page, I have all these different applications that you could look at. I have atlassearchrestaurants.com. And then as you kind of, type these things out, it'll build out those queries for you. So as you type, you could see how these things go. Oh, thank you, Utsaf. Um, AtlasSearchSoccer.com, that's another that's another one I have that you could like find your favorite soccer players and then you could see, hit the advanced scouting. And then as you sort of click on sliders and stuff, it'll show the code being built out. And then Atlas Search indexes. Uh, um, Utsoft, you might try the second page of Atlas Search Indexes because in that one you can post like your sample text to it and hit submit and then you can sort of query, do different queries and see if they work. Um, how we can search for something like, let me read this question real quick. How can we search for something like movie A or movie B and movie C uh, and movie D? Hmm. I have to think about that. My mind's a little, my mind's a little numb. Utsav, why don't you, why don't you message me on Twitter and then I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. And then if I can put it in the workshop, I'll put it in the workshop. So if it, I don't know why I said message me on Twitter, I'll just copy your question, <laughs> but no, because I need your, I need your contact information. <clears throat> so with that, um, we have, uh, 
th this is our like contact information. Happy to talk to you guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know what other lessons I should include in there. Facets should be done this weekend. Um, this is live for you to use now. Check out those resources, Atlas Search Movies. You click on different things and it'll show you function scoring them. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I'm you old maid on Twitter. Nick is NRA boy. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because sure. two things can be true at the same time. <laughs> so, and uh, and it was really great to great to great to work with you, Nick. Do you do you want to talk plugs. about? Yeah, I have <laughs> some, some plugs, plugs here. Yeah, so let me share my screen. All right, I believe I have a URL still open. Uh, I wanted to plug an event that's happening next week in case you're in the area. Um, so MongoDB will be at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. It's next week. Um, I will be there personally as well. And I encourage you to swing by the booth if uh, if you're in the area as well. But we also do have other events happening at MongoDB. Um, so we do have an events page. Um, and I'll actually drop it in the chat so that way you can see. Uh, in case there is an event in your area that uh, you want to connect at. So this is this is the URL. I also do want to put out one more plug as well. Uh, this is for the MongoDB podcast because I think Mike Lynn is still lurking and he would love a plug for his fabulous uh, show. Um, so mongodb.com slash podcast. If you're looking for ideas on how to use MongoDB, um, that is a good starting point because Mike interviews all kinds of companies that, that are using MongoDB and learns about their use cases. Uh, I think that's all my plugs. What do you think, Karen? Yeah, I have. We have we have uh, lots of us. We we go do talks. I'm actually going to be at uh, Node Congress in Berlin. I know we had some people from Germany on here, so I'll be Node Congress in Berlin. I'll be doing a talk on search, uh, and then I'm at uh, DevOx in Greece and in London, where I do talks about GraphQL and other things. But we do have events coming up in Canada, Leo, and we have one of our favorite teammates is actually far from Montreal, like north of Montreal. I didn't know there was too much stuff north, but that's where he's from. Um, and uh, and uh, I we would love to hear about what content we should create. This one was a lot of fun. This is an this was an evolution of all the questions we've had over the last couple of years. And I hopefully made it easy for you guys to like play around with and learn. But if you have any problems uh, or suggestions, let us know. Anything Thanks. else that we should add or should we call it? That's all I have. All right, everyone. Bye, Take it easy. Have a great rest of your day.